Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Soul Standing. My name is Beth, and today in my pursuit for doing a video every day until New Year's, I'm going to be talking to you about two of the books that I have recently completed. Okay, so originally I was going to do a separate book review for each of these, but uh, got up this morning and decided I didn't want to. So I'm going to talk very briefly about both of them, how I rated them, and what I thought about them, and then we'll move on. So the first one I finished recently was Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is the Alcrate exclusive cover, but my favorite part isn't the dust jacket, it's the inside, the actual hardcover. It's like that, and oh my goodness, with the Harlequin print, I just love it. Love, 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 love. Um, now, I gave this book a very soft four-star rating. The end bumped it up because until the last chapter or so, I was dead set on giving this a three-star. There were parts that I really enjoyed, but there were more parts that I kind of just didn't get the point of or didn't feel like had been fleshed out enough, described enough, or felt like were pointless. Pointless, 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 which I already said, but I just wanted to repeat it. Um, and then the ending got me, and I went from three to three and a half stars to like 3.8 stars, so I gave it a complete four star, but it is a very soft rating. Um, now, if you're not aware, Heartless is super, super hyped on YouTube booktube right now, but it is the story of Kath, who is the daughter of the Marquis and Marquess, Mar I, Marquesa. I've said that so wrong. I'm so sorry, people that, that know how to say that. Um, of Turtle Cove in the Land of Hearts in Wonderland. And her parents are hoping to marry her off to the King of Hearts, and she just wants to be a baker. So a lot of things happen. There is magic, there are impossible things, there's a love story, and I liked it, but, like I said, I felt like there were a lot of places that needed fleshing out and a lot of places that needed to just go away. There were some unnecessary inclusions in there that could have, you know, been removed without changing the story even in the slightest or my enjoyment of the story even in the slightest, except for maybe making me enjoy it even more. I do want to say here that while I'm not usually a huge fan of the romances that are being involved in retellings, I really, really liked the one in Heartless. I loved the character that Kath falls for I loved the way that they meet, and it's not exactly insta-love. I mean, it takes a while for her to be like, oh my gosh, I fell in love with him. Like, she realizes she's drawn to him, but it's not insta-love, and I liked that. And I just, I want one of my own. So there you have it. And the Mad Hatter is my favorite character from Alice in Wonderland, and I actually kind of like the way they did Hatta in this. Um, he wasn't my favorite character in the book. He's like my third favorite character, but I enjoyed him. And the introduction of Raven was really good as well. But that's all I have to say about Heartless. So let's move on to the other book I finished last week, which is Eligible by Curtis Sittenfield. And yes, I did just hit myself in the face. I won this several months ago from a Random House Twitter giveaway, and I was super excited because it is a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but then I had a huge TBR and didn't get around to it, so I decided that before this year ended, I was going to read it, and I did. It actually read really, really quickly. The longest chapter was like four pages long. It's set up in three different parts, and it follows a reiteration of the Bennett sisters and, of course, Bingley and Caroline and Darcy that are, I believe it's the early 2000s. I don't know, it came out in 2016, so I guess it's 
2016-ish in the book. Um, but anyway, it follows Lizzie, who is in her late 30s and is a magazine writer. And then there's Jane, who is 40 and a yoga instructor. And they live in New York, but they are from Cincinnati, where their family still lives. Their sisters are all in their 20s and still living at home. And Mrs. Bennett has a shopping problem. And Bingley is a surgeon who has just moved to town. He was also on Eligible, which is basically The Bachelor, except really a lot funnier. And of course, Caroline is still Caroline. Darcy is a neurosurgeon, something like that, and he is most definitely an updated modern version of Mr. Darcy, and I love this book, guys. I gave it a four stars. It's a solid four to four and a half stars. There were a few spots where bringing the story up to date just kind of took away some of the magic, I feel like, and there were some areas that we didn't really um, get to see because it was so mired in the way the original book was written that they couldn't update it very well. But this book is also pretty diverse. It shows, um, one of the daughters with a colored man and one of the daughters with a transgendered person and one of the daughters with artificial insemination and um, Mr. Bennett has a heart attack, and so they have to deal with that. So it is, it's a very, very, very well-written book. I really enjoyed it. I could keep on gushing, but I'm not going to make it any longer. Um, in fact, the one thing I wish that this book was was just a little bit longer. I don't want it to be like another 100 pages, but I think... If there were 10 to 15 more pages just kind of interspersed throughout the book, an extra paragraph in this chapter, a couple of extra sentences over here that fleshed it out a little bit more, I think I would have given it a full five stars. I can't be for certain. I think one of my biggest complaints about most books is that I feel like there could be more information. And that's probably a big complaint when you love a book and you want more out of it, you know. But uh, like I said, Eligible, definitely a great read. I don't normally read contemporaries or romances, but this was well worth it. And I'm looking forward to more Curtis Sitton film books. So these are the two that I read in the last week. If you have read them, please let me know what you think down below. Or if you haven't read them, I urge you to pick them up, especially Eligible, but both of them were good. And that's all I've got for you today. So I will talk to you guys again soon. Until next time, write something good and read something better.